talking and start sharing my screen. So do you remember that project we did last week? Chester? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, okay. So I think the connection's a bit slow, so I'll just speak slowly and then, huh? I, then I'll wait for your reply. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I think it was cutting out. Okay, I think it's. Okay, so we're just going to open that project we started last week. And let me just get it up. Where is it? I'll show you what it's meant to look like again to refresh our memory. Let me just the example project up one second okay can you still see my screen okay yes yep okay so if you remember this is what we made or started making last week so it asked us how many sides will the shape have and we would just put in a number and then it would draw one of that shape and then keep drawing that shape to make like a cool pattern. Okay. Yep, so that's what we need to make. So what we have so far is it's just making one shape. So if you open up what you had from last week and run it, we can just see what it does. So if you run your project, if you run your project, does it open and ask you how many shapes will the how many sides will the shape have? Yeah. Yep. And then if you put in a number, so like five again, you can see that it draws a pentagon or a shape with however however many sides you told it to draw. Does yours do that as well? Yeah, but like once I do it, mm -hmm. it like it stops. Closes. Oh, it closes. Okay. So I'm opening it from from like oh, the yeah. file. So yeah. It just closes. Yeah. So if you double click and open it, then it just does it and then closes because it's finished with the program and it closes. So yeah, you might need to open it, like edit with idle and then run it from there. So once you've run it, let me know if it works. So it's just, it should just draw one shape for now. It doesn't make the cool pattern yet, because that's what we need to do next. I, I don't have the item that says, doesn't have a thing that says share with, like edit with idle. Edit with idle. All right, so I think yours was the one that didn't have that. So what you might need to do is, you know how you normally open up idle? Like when you look yeah. for a program and you type in idle, you might need to do that. And then once you've opened it, you should be able to go file and then open file. I close it.
to file and then open and then you can choose where your program was saved. So once you've done that, let me know if it works. Did you manage to get it open yet? No. Not yet? So do you have idle open? Like a new idle thing? Yep. Yeah. Okay. From there, on the top, you should be able to click on file and then open. And then you just need to remember where you saved it last time in what folder and things. So you just click on file, open, and then you have to choose which Yay. file it is. You got it? I got what I have had last time. Okay, cool. Yeah, on the thing. Yay, that's good. So it draws one shape. Yep. Do you want to quickly test it and see if it works? So by running it? Yeah. Yep. Bye. So run, run, Yay! Run. Yay. Works. Okay, cool. Nice. So what we want to do is if we look back at the example program, it doesn't just draw one shape. It draws like however many times. So say you said five. It draws that one shape on each side of the shape. So it looks like a really cool pattern. Yeah, so it draws the first side of shape mm -hmm. five times. Yep, pretty much. So what we need to do is make our shape draw five times. So if we go back to our code, currently, do you remember what a for loop does? It makes it go four times. Yeah, almost. So it makes whatever's inside that loop repeat, however, much, like however many times you tell it to. So in our case, so sometimes it could be four times, but it could be five times. It depends because we use this variable called sides. And the variable sides is the input that the person put in. So if the person put in three, then the for loop will make it go three times. If we put in five, then the for loop will make it repeat five times. Does that make sense? So far. So I think the connection is dropping out a bit. I'll just wait a minute. Yeah. I think I think I might exit and go back in uh, to see if we'll have better connection. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. You can try that. See if it works. I'll stop sharing my screen for the minute as well, just to see if that helps. Okay, hi again. <laughs> How is the connection so far? So far. Yep. Okay, cool. I'm just going to share my screen again, see what happens. If it's still a bit slow, we can try just turn off our webcams as well, because that might take a bit of yeah. thing. But for now, it seems okay. So we'll just continue and see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we have our for loop that repeats what we want to do 
um, however many times. So in this case, the amount of times is however many sides a person types in. But what we want to do is like what you said, if we draw a shape with five sides, we want to draw that shape five times as well. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember how at the end of last week we were going through something called a nested for loop? So it's like when we had a for loop inside another for loop. Oh yeah, I remember. Yep. Yeah. So do you kind of remember how they were? Not sure. Not sure. So I'll quickly show you again. Just well, I to... might remember. You might I remember. Could... That's okay. It's so like it would repeat it four times. Mm -hmm. Or like it would repeat the for loop on top. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. I think the connection might have dropped out a bit again. Can you hear me again, Chester? Yeah, I just dropped out. Dropped out again? Okay. I turned off my video just to see if that would help. So if you want, you can do that too. On the top, I think near where the share screen button and stuff is, there should be a thing called um, turn off video or like stop video. Can you hear me again, Chester? Yes. Yes? Okay. It dropped out again. Yeah, it dropped out again. Okay, we'll see if this works. So we both turned off our webcam. I'm going to share my screen. If that doesn't work, I might try like log out and come back in. But hopefully this works. So we were, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. So we were talking about how you have like a for loop called something called a nested for loop. So you're yeah. trying to remember what it was. Do you, do you have an idea of what it is? Yeah. So, so basically repeats it eight times. Yep. Yeah. So the for loop is repeating the for loop. Yeah, yeah, so pretty much. So it might not always be eight, but it depends. So, like, if we have our for loop, I'm just commenting this out for a second. So, if we have a normal for loop, so like for i in range and the range is four, then, like, if we wanted to move forward, for example. So like this would happen, this is just a normal for loop. So this would happen 10 times, I mean four, 40 times. Like, sorry, it would happen four times because it's moving 10 each time. Um, can you hear me still, Chester? Okay. <laughs> I think it dropped out again. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. I might. Hmm. Okay. We'll just continue, see how it goes, and hopefully it doesn't drop out too much. Maybe if you can just keep that chat thing open as well, because we're not using our webcams, just so that if you need to ask a question and sometimes I can't hear you or you can't hear me. You can say something in there. 
Okay. Yep. Okay. So like you said, if you have a nested for loop, it might do something eight times because it's doing that inside for loop and that outside for loop. So yeah, I was just showing you like an example of how that might work. So this is a normal for loop that does something four times. So it moves Bob, Bob forward 10 steps each time. So overall, how many times would that be? How, like how far would Bob move forward? 40 steps. Yep, exactly. And then if we added another for loop, so for i in range four, and then put this first for loop inside that other for loop, how far do you think Bob will move? 80 steps. Yep, cool. Good job. And then if I change the outside loop to maybe be two instead. I think it would be 40. 60 steps. 60, yes, it would be. Hang on. We might have got that a bit wrong, so hang on. Let me double check this. <laughs> So if it moves 10, 40 each times, 40 times two. Okay, no, sorry. So you're almost right. But what it is, is what we have right now, Bob would move 80 steps with this bit of code. Because this inside for loop means 40 steps. And we want to do this 40 step thing two times. So it's like 40 steps plus 40 steps. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So overall it's 80 steps? Yep. So then if this was changed to four, then we'd be doing this bit of code, which is 40 steps four times. So 40 steps plus 40 steps plus 40 steps plus 40 steps. So that would be like 160 steps. Does that make sense as well, Chester? Um, are you still there, Chester? Can you hear me, Chester? Yes. Yes? Okay, sorry. I think you dropped out for a second because I tried to message you, but it didn't work. Also, this is week um, six. Cool. Yeah, okay. I'm going to just share my screen again. So, hey, it's not over yet. <laughs> yep, yeah, you still have a few weeks left. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, cool. So I think you understand the nested for loop. So I'm just going to... Get rid of that example and get our normal code back. Oh. So right now we just draw one shape. So for example, if it's a square, it will just draw one square. But if we want to draw this that square, this square, four times, what do we need to do? Hmm. Put it in a for loop? Yep. Yeah. So we want to put it in another for loop. So for i in range, and then do you know how many times we want to loop this thing? So do you know what we'll put inside the brackets of this range? So Chester, how many times do you think we will um, we'll have to repeat this loop? Like what do we need to put inside the bracket? Sides? Yep. 
cool. Sides is exactly right. And then do you know why we put sides in? So it knows to do the thing like five times. Yeah, exactly. Or whatever so, you put in. Yeah. The shape five times. Uh huh. Exactly right. Like the five sides. Um, yes. Yeah. So if it was a square, it would know we put in four, so it would do it four times. If it was a pentagon, it would know we put in the number five, so it would do five times and things like that. So is there anything else we need to do with this bit of code before we can run it? Hmm. Not sure. Not sure. Okay, so what do we usually do when we put in a loop? Like, do we need any special type of spacing or? Like, I can't remember. Like you can't remember? So that's okay. So if you look at this second for loop, what do you see here? Like before Bob dot forward, what do we have? Do we have some spacing? Yeah. So we want to make sure that this for loop happens inside this first top for loop. So we can just highlight the second for loop and press okay. tab. Oh, sorry. Well, is that what you're gonna say? No, I was no. gonna say like copy. Copy? Not exactly. So we copy. don't need to. We don't need to copy anything. We just want to make sure that this for loop goes inside this for loop. We want to make sure the program knows that it's part of that for loop. So what we can do is we just press tab and then we get some space inside. So oh, now, yeah, yeah, so now the program knows this for loop is like the main one and then this for loop like happens inside the other for loop. Okay, now once you've done that, you can try save it and run it and let's see what happens. So it, did you run it and see what happened? Not yet. Doing it right now. Okay. Yep. What, yep. And what happened? So it continues going around the shape five times. Yep. So it does repeat it five times, but yeah, it's not five. doing it like how we want to, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So I'll just go back to that example one to show you again. So it asks us how many sides will the shape have? And if I say five, it does one. And then can you see what it's doing after drawing the shape? Yeah. What do you think it's doing? So it's drawing the shape next, the shape next to it. Yep. So it's drawing it next to it. So if we want to, because right now in our program, it's drawing it on top of it. So if we want to draw it next to it, like if we want to move a bit and draw it next to it, what do we have to do? Do you have an idea? No. No? So that's okay. What we need to do is we need Maybe to... Move left, Bob dot left sides. Um, yes, almost. So Bob dot left turns it. So we do want to turn it, but we want to turn it, we want to go bob dot left angle. So that's one thing we want to do. Angle. But another thing we want to do is we want to actually go forward a bit more. Like we want to make you know how each side of the shape, currently each side of the shape is 100? 
we want to make this side of the shape go a bit more so that like it makes a bigger shape if that yeah. makes sense so what we can do so if you look at this really slowly um so five so it, it drew a long line first and then it drew our shape did you see that so i'll start it again yeah so if you're looking at the screen i press five and as soon as i start it draws a long line and then does the shape but the shape doesn't fit that whole line yet. Do you see what I mean at the bottom here? So what we want to do is we want to draw a line that's double the size of our other shape. So in here, in our outside for loop, what we can do is we can go bob dot forward. And then I might make this outside one 100 and make the inside one half that size, so 50. Can you still hear me, Chester? Okay. Can you hear me again? Yes. Yes? Okay. Dropped out for a second. So, yeah. if we go back to my screen, did you see how I was showing you how it draws that line first? Like the longer line? Did you see that part? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, we need to do that in our code here. So, in our first for loop, we want to draw the shape, but we want the shape to be double the size of the shape inside of our normal shape, like of the shape we were drawing before. So what we can do is we can go bob dot forward. So before the bob dot left, in that first for loop, we can go bob dot forward. And then I might make this, because I think if we make it 200, our shape might be huge. So I might make this one 100. And then in our loop, our nested loop, so the one inside, I'm going to make the other shape half that size. So I want to make it 50. So what we're doing is we're drawing the shape and we're repeating it. But in the inside loop, we're drawing a smaller shape. And then in the outside loop, we're drawing one big shape. So let me know when you've typed that bit of code in. So yeah, I've typed it in. Yep. Okay. So what this is doing is, you know how when we had this normal for loop, it was just drawing our shape. So if we had five yeah. sides, it did like the small five-sided shape. Yeah. What this is doing is it's doing the same thing, but it's just drawing a bigger five-sided shape. But then after it draws like each line of that shape, it draws a mini shape inside there. And then it goes back and draws the next line of the big shape and then draws the mini shape. And it keeps doing it until it finishes. So what you can do is you can run it. So run, run module and see what happens. So you can see what it looks like now. And now it should draw that cool looking shape. Well, 
draws it like. Do you want to share your screen? So I'll stop it sharing draws mine. it like. Not like. Not like what it's meant to. On your screen. Not yeah. like what's on my screen. No. Okay. Um. How about you share your screen? Then we can have a look at what's happening. So this button should be on the top or bottom that says share. Okay, just loading. Oh, okay. So it is a cool looking shape, but it's not the cool looking shape we were thinking of. Um, oh, okay, so I see what it is. So do you see how your numbers are 65 and 55? Can you still hear me? Can you hear me again? Okay, so Chester, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yep, okay, cool. So if you look at your numbers, so in your first fold, in the outside fold, you move forward 65 times. So you're drawing a shape that has like each side is 65 pixels long, but then in your other smaller for loop, you're going forward 55 times. So you're drawing a shape that's, you know, 55 points long each side. But what you want is you want the smaller shape to be half the size of that outside shape. Okay. So the numbers I used was like 150. Because that way, when it draws each side, so like, if you picture it drawing one huge shape with each side as 100 pixels, you want it to draw like the little shape with each side as 50 pixels so that all the little shapes can fit inside it nicely. Okay. So like if you picture a square, you know how we have a square? Yeah. If you want to like draw kind of like a window shape with a square, so you want you have one big square and you want it to be divided up into four, how would you divide it up? Like, if you pretend you were just drawing on a piece of paper, like you drew a square, but you wanted to make it into four smaller squares. Where would you draw like the lines to make it into four? So you yeah. draw the lines through the middle? Yep, exactly. So you draw the lines Across through the middle. middle. Yep. So that means like each little square inside that big square has like half the length of the big square. So if one side of the big square is 100, you'd want to draw the little line like at 50 so that you'd have each square fitting nicely. But anyway, you can run your program and see what it looks like now and see if it works. And then try it out with a couple of different shapes as well. If you just wanna double check. So try it with like five sides and maybe less and more. 
Yay, it works. It works? Cool. Got it. My journey repeats it once. Yeah. Like it says how many sides will our shape have once. Ah, uh, yeah. So do you want to kind of make it so that it keeps asking you? So it only asks you once because we, in our code, we just ask that question once. But if you want it to keep asking you, do you know what you might do? So can you still hear me, Chester? Okay, Chester, can you hear me? Oh. Okay, can you hear me again? Chester? Chester, are you still there? Hi, Chester. Can you hear me again? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Cool. So let me share my screen again. So what you were saying was it only asks you that question, how many sides will the shape have once, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then like if you want to keep drawing different shapes or like trying out different shapes, you like always have to close it and then run it again. So what we can do is, what's something that we can add to make like our program repeat itself? So if you want a bit of code to be repeated, What should we add? So we so if we want to keep doing something and like keep repeating it. So one way we did it is with this for loop. So we have like we repeat this however many times. So for example, we could repeat something four times or repeat something 10 times. Like it depends however many times we tell it to repeat it. But if we want to repeat something forever, to keep repeating it, do you have an idea on what we might do? Not sure. Not sure? That's okay. So do you remember when we did something with something called a while loop? I think we might have used it a couple of, kind of, that's okay. So I think we might have used it a couple of lessons ago, possibly. But what a while loop does is it means you can, it's kind of like a for loop. You can repeat stuff, but we can tell it when to repeat. So for example, we can be like, while, like something, while something is true, we want to continue repeating this whole program or something like that. 
So what we can do in this case is at the very top. So after importing turtle, we can type in the word while and type in the word true with a capital T. So true with a capital T is a Boolean. We kind of went through bo Booleans in the first week. So it's another type of data. So a Boolean is like if something is true or if it's false. So we're telling it like true means it is true. So in this while loop, we're saying while something is true and the something which we're telling it to be true is actually true. So this is another way of saying continue something forever. So I don't know if you've done scratch, but it's like a forever book. Okay, you're back. Can you hear me again, Jessica? Jester, can you hear me? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yep. Cool. So if we want to make something repeat forever, we can type in this bit of code here that's called that says while true. So it's like another type of loop. So it's a bit like a for loop, but instead of repeating it like however many times we tell it to, so like for example, this repeats it four or five or whatever number we put in, this while true thing will keep repeating something forever because this word here true means like something is true. So it's saying while something is true and this is the something, so it's saying like while true is true, yeah. we want to do some code. So it might be a bit confusing, but just remember it as like a forever loop kind of thing. So if you just want something to keep doing it forever, you just need this while true block. So once you've typed that, have you typed that into your code, into your program?
Hello, David. Can you Hello. hear me? Yep. Oh, hi. Cool. Um, Hello. so Chester was here, but I think his I think it was his internet. It was dropping out, so he might pop in a bit later. So okay. we were just working on the project that we started last week. So I'll just share my screen again. I was just waiting for Chester to reconnect. But um, if you have a look at my screen to try follow on, what you want to do is you want to get your project from last week open as well? Um, yeah. Yep. So do you have it open? Like you know how we were drawing that shape? Yeah, wait. So just get that up. Yes, yeah, there. Okay, so is it open? Yep. Okay, cool. So what you have so far is when you run it, it just, it just draws one shape. But what we want it to do is if you look at my the example one, yeah. we want it to make like a cool pattern to shape. So it draws like lots of little shapes within one big shape. So it asks how many sides will the shape have? And I said five. So it's drawing five little shapes in one big shape that has five sides. That's cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So we have some of it working. Oh, so we completed it in, I completed it with Chester just now, but I can quickly show you before he comes back. So what we need to do is, do you kind of remember how last week I was talking about something called nested loops? like a for loop inside another for loop? Oh yeah. Yep. So I'll quickly explain it to you again. So just ignore the code on top for a second. If I have, so don't write this down yet, I'm just showing you. If I have something like this, oops, sorry, so, both, so this is one for loop. So just the thing that I've highlighted here. So I say for I in range four, I want to move forward 10 steps. So how far will Bob move overall? Mm. So you can just have a guess. I think it's 40. Yep, that's yeah. exactly right. So. Why do you think it's 40? Uh, because it's 4 times 10, kind of math. Yeah, yeah kind of math, yeah. Because what this for loop is doing is it's saying, repeat what's inside of here four times. So we want to move forward like 10 steps, four times, which is 40 steps. Now, yeah. if I added, yeah, so it's math. So now if I added another for loop, so for I in range and then I might say two and then what I want to do is the current for loop that we have I'm just putting it inside that this other for loop now how many times do you think Bob will go like how far will Bob go forward okay so I think it's 400 not Exactly. So we already said before, like this first for loop, it will go 40 steps because it's like four times 10. So it's moving 10 steps four times. Yeah. So now if you yep. put that whole loop inside another loop, so this other loop is telling us to repeat it two times. So right now, this loop. Like the inside loop is pretty much saying move forward 40 steps. So if we want, if we want to do that thing two times, so move forward 40 steps two times, how many steps will it move forward? Yeah, uh, it's gonna move for eight. So, yep, yeah, exactly. So it's moving forward 80 steps. So that's what a nested for loop is doing. So it kind of does 
um, like it does this inside one, but then it runs through every time you do this outside loop. So like it goes, it starts here, it starts at this step and then it goes, okay, I need to go 40 steps. Now it goes back again to the loop and this is the second time it's going a loop. It's like, okay, I need to do another 40 steps. Does that kind of make sense? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. So this is what you call a nested loop. So it's like a loop inside another loop. So what you want to do is, so right now your code, ignore the stuff in red. Your code probably looks like this. You have one loop that says move forward a certain amount and then turn left. Yeah. Yep. So what that does is it just draws one shape, doesn't it? So if you just run it. Yeah, so sure. Run it and see what happens. So if you type in like, for example, the number five, you can see what happens. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So so do you see how it just drew one shape so far? Yeah. Yep. But then, you know, in that example project I did, if I type in the number five, it how many shapes? It does five shapes. Uh, yeah. It does five shapes. Yeah, exactly. So it so does it just four times. So we need to make uh, this program repeat five times. Yeah, exactly. So to do, to make this thing repeat five times, it's, we just use a nested for loop. So we go, so on top of your other for loop, you go for i in range. And inside the brackets, instead of doing it five times, because it, we might want to do like a square sometimes or like a hexagon. So we don't want to say only repeat it five times. So what number or word would we put inside the brackets? Mm, we'll, we'll equip um, five, I think, or. So if we do it five times, then even, you know, at the beginning of the program, it asks us how many sides will the shape have? And then we type in a number. Yeah. We want it to be like whatever number we type in. So can oh, you yes. see? Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you have to type in um, I forgot I forgot who okay. you type in so somewhere in this pro this bit of the code so where where we ask the person how many sides will the shape have we save it in a variable so do, can you see what the variable is called yeah Yep, what's it called? It's, um... So, do you see in your code, like, the question, how many sides will the shape have, or something like that? Oh, yeah. Yep, so there's, like, in that line of code, there's an equal sign. So that means it's being saved into a variable. Yeah, so you have to put I and T there. So almost, like what's the thing before the equal sign? Or oh, before yeah. the I and T, sorry. And before the equal sign. What's the other yeah, one? Sides. Yep, exactly. So inside that brackets where it says range, we want to put in the word sides. Yeah. And then whenever we have a loop, we need that colon, semicolon thing. Yep. Yep. But now, if you look at our code, is there another thing we need to do with loops? So to make sure that our program knows that this bit is meant to be inside this outside for loop, do we need to move this anywhere or add something to it? Oh, yeah, we have to add something to it. Yep. Do you know what we have to add? INT? Not exactly. So INT changes something to a number. 
Oh, yeah, sure. So if you have a look at this for loop, like the second one, we have our semicolon. And then where's the next bit of code? Is it straight after or is there some space? Yeah. Um, so what is it, sorry? Is there, is it straight after or is there some space? There is some space. Yep. So that tells the program these lines of code are part of this for loop. So we need to tell our program that this whole for loop is part of this outside for loop. So to do that, you highlight that for loop, the second for loop, so these three lines of code, and you just press tab. So that will add some space inside it. Yeah, okay. So do that and save it and see what happens. Yeah, okay. So do I run it? Yeah, so run it and let's have a look at what happens. Okay. So, so it's just how many sides will a shape have? Yep, so. You well, how many do I, do I type in? So you can put in whatever number you want, like three, four, or five. Okay, I'll do five because it was in the original example. Yep. So, yeah. So now if you look at oh, your so program, it draws, it draws as a shape five times. Yeah. So it's, so it is repeating it five times, but it's not doing exactly what we want it to do, right? Yeah. So if let's look back at the example one again. So if I press play and I'll stick with the same number five again and press enter, do you see how it draws a big line and then it draws a smaller shape inside of it? Yeah. So it's like drawing five smaller shapes, but then it's drawing one big shape as well. So it's doing like five smaller five-sided shape, shapes inside one big five-sided shape. So I'll show yeah. you again, but like with the square, it might be easier to picture. So if this shape will have four sides and I press enter. So it drew one small square, one, another small square, another small square and another small square, but it also drew a big square. So do you see like as soon as I start the program, it draws a line and then halfway through like that small square is drawn. So like there's like an extra line sticking out, but then in the end it finishes. Yeah. Yeah. So what it's doing is it's drawing like this big outer square, but after it draws each side of that big outside shape, it draws the little shape. So it like does that bottom line, then there's a little shape. There's that line on the right. There's yeah. a little shape. There's the line on top little shape and a line on bottom and a little shape. So yep. if we go back into our code, what we want to do is after that, that top for loop, we want to copy the, copy this code. So Bob dot forward and Bob dot left. So you can copy it and we want to put it So make sure they're in line. We want to put it straight after that first for loop. Yep. Yep. So what that is doing is it's saying, okay, we want to draw one shape that has like each side is a hundred pixels in length. And then it's saying when we're drawing each side, we also want to draw a little mini shape inside that. So what we need to do is in that second for loop, Instead of it um, being going, like instead of Bob going forward a hundred steps, we want to make it go forward half that size. So what number would we type instead? Um, I don't really know. Half of a hundred. Half of a hundred. Okay, 50, so. Yep, so we type in 50. Because yeah. what we're doing is this first for loop or like the outside for loop, is drawing a big shape. So for example, a square, it's drawing a big shape where each side is a hundred. But then after it draws each side, it goes into this little for loop 
where it draws a small square inside that. So it draws one line, then a small square, one line, a small square, one line, a small square, and like does that. Yeah, okay. So what you can do is you can run it and see what happens. Yeah, sure. So, so run it and then you can oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I put five sides. Yep. Uh, yeah. Now it should be making a cool shape. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Where did my head? So yeah. Short. So oh. that's we did that using something called a nested loop. So what it means by nested is it just means like one loop is inside another loop. So that's what that kind of means. Um, but yeah, it's also 5.30 now, so that's the end of the class. Um, so did you have any questions before we finish? No, not at all. No? Okay, so that's okay then. Make sure to save your project and I'll see you next week. Oh, uh, well, that was a pretty quick lesson. <laughs> yes, I think, so make sure next time you're here at 4.30 because the class starts at 4.30. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I'm really sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, it's just because otherwise you miss out on the class. Oh, yeah, okay. So next, next time I'll be right on time. Yep, that's good. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then the class will be longer for you. <laughs> okay. Yep, okay, cool. Well, I'll see you next week then. Yeah, you too. Okay, bye. Bye.